me ask you a question. I don't want you to answer it out loud. Does God like you? Now, I've seen some people who have heard pastors ask that question who say, well, we're just teaching a soft Christianity because God doesn't like us. Really? He created you with your personality. Now, don't mix that up with your baggage and don't mix that up with your sin. Two separate things. The reason I think sometimes we don't pray is because we don't realize that God loves to spend time with us. I mean, you were created for a relationship with God. God didn't need to create us, but He loves us. He wanted us to have a relationship with Him, and that's why He sent Jesus. And so today, maybe you're not spending time in prayer. Maybe you're not even wanting to become a Christian because your whole view of God is he hates me. He can't wait to wipe me out when the truth is the exact opposite. See, Satan wants you to believe that God hates your guts and is coming to take you away. Where the truth is the story of the prodigal father where he waits on the porch for you to come home. And when you take a step to come home, guess what the father does? Runs at you wraps his arms around you and says, welcome home. See, God loves you more than you could love anyone. Grandparents, let me tell you something. He loves you more than you love your grandchildren. Now, somebody says to me, but Eric, you don't understand. I don't have grandchildren. I just have children. You don't know how much I love my children. Well, I've heard from grandparents 10 times more. Ten, Carol, is that right? The grandkid? Okay. I won't, I won't tell her. Prayer is a way for you and I to spend time with the God who loves you. But not just to spend time with Him, but also, listen, to line our will up with His will, not the other way around. Too often we pray, God, my will be done. God, do what I want you to do. So today what I want to do is we're going to do a simple pattern for prayer for the next few weeks, for the next four weeks. And the reason I'm giving you a pattern for prayer is this. How many of you ever get distracted? Let me say that again for some of you. How many of you ever get distracted? Okay. Some of you were like, what? What did he just ask? Everybody has their hand up. Okay. We all get distracted. So, so there is no, listen, there is no formula for prayer that you have to do. It is, this is not Harry Potter where you have to do an incantation a certain way or God may not hear you. Listen, he loves to talk to you even though to God we are all special needs. Do you ever think about that? I have a special needs daughter. I love her sometimes more. I, just as much as my other children, right? And God's wisdom compared to ours, imagine what he looks at us and thinks sometimes. And I even think that sometimes, to be honest, that sometimes on Sundays from heaven, God looks over at an angel and goes, did Eric just say that? And the angel goes, yeah, I don't know. We, we wanted to take him out, but you wouldn't let us. Right? Now, here's a simple pattern for prayer. You can do this anywhere. You can do this when you're in a meeting at the Space Center. Here it is. Just use the word Acts. Today we're going to talk about adoration. Next week we're going to talk about confession. So you may not want to come to that one. Thanksgiving, my favorite. I call Thanksgiving the life preserver when life is rough. And then supplication, that's praying for yourself. And then live, ending prayer with praying for other people. Supplication is both. It's lifting up your prayers to God. And so this is a simple act of prayer. But I hope today I'm going to teach you something about adoration so you can start praying. Even, listen... If you just do this one thing as part of your life, it will help you to recognize God's presence always. How many of you think God's with you now? How many of you think God's with you in your home? Yeah, you, you didn't show up in church and then God showed up. When you go home, he's with you. When, even when you're at work, he's with you. Even if you work construction. If you're a fisherman... If you've watched Deadliest Catch, you know they have to beep half the show. Now, I want to show you something real quick. We're going to talk about how to adore God in prayer, but I just want to give you a few hints about prayer. 
This is my iPad, okay? And you may not have an iPad. I, I did all of what I'm about to say on paper till about three months ago, okay? Um, but I actually have in my, I have a couple of things on my iPad. I have daily bread. I've got a whole section for my devotions. I have daily bread. I have an app called My Utmost for His Highest, which is from the 1800s and still just, or early 1900s, but still very practical today. And so usually I'll spend some time in the Bible. Then I'll take out, I have a prayer app here, which I do, it has daily prayers for each day. And I have certain things I pray for every day, my family, certain things for myself. Different ones for each day. Sundays I pray for a lot of my friends who are pastors and for their churches. A lot of times as pastors we know who, what they're going through. But I have a journal section in here too, so... What I'll do is read the scripture for the day or read the daily devotion and just write a few thoughts down. You know why? I don't know about you, but I've walked away from my devotion and forgot what I devoted. So when you write it down, it helps. You, you put pen to paper, and I know this doesn't look like paper to you. By the way, you ever thought we went, the Bible started out on tablet, then it went to, then it went to scrolls, then it went to paper, and then back to tablet? I had somebody tell me one time, you know, Eric, that Bible on tablets not very spiritual. I said, I think Moses might disagree. <laughs> now, when you do adoration, what does adoration mean? We, we think of it as this big word. I'm going to make it simple for you. Isn't he adorable? This is me as a little kid. I used to be adorable. Not at all times, but. You think of adoring someone, it literally is the idea of a deep love, a respect. You know, we think of a kid being adorable, but the truth is that word can mean even worship. When we sing these songs of praise, guess what you're doing? You're adoring. When you have your quiet time, you can open to the Psalms over and over. It's adoration. By the way, don't freak out because we have ACTS. When adoration becomes thanksgiving, here's the big difference. Adoration is what you're saying to God about God. Thanksgiving's a lot of times for things he's provided. It can be about God too, but don't feel like if those overlap that you, oh, I messed up the prayer time. You're, you're, you're spending time with God. So I'm going to give you Three tips. Number one, this is the most important part of prayer. Number one, recognize his greatness and your weakness. You will never have communion with God in arrogance. When you think that you've got your act together, I think many times God goes, I'll wait for you to figure out you don't. Psalms 18. Now, I love reading the Psalms during my quiet time, especially songs of David like this. Realize that David killed Goliath. David had people sing songs about him. Can you imagine walking through town and people are like, Eric is awesome. He's the best. Hey, that's Eric. You know, you'd be like, well, you'd be hard not to get prideful. This is David. He's wiped people out. He was a great warrior. Listen to what he says here. This is after he's rescued from Saul, by the way. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except for our God? Listen, when the rock, when you, if the rock walked in this room, we would all go, whoa. But when the rock comes before God, guess what the rock's going to go? Whoa. Compared to God, the rock is nothing. That's what this verse says. See, before the rock even knew it, he was in the Bible. And who is the rock except for our God? It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. By the way, what do you do for a living? If you're an engineer, he trains my mind to do engineering. He trains my mouth to be able to speak on Sunday. What is it you do? Have you thanked God for that? God, you train me. You're adoring him. You're saying, God, you've given me the ability to do what I know how to do. You make your saving help my shield. By the way, we all need that prayer sometimes. God, I feel like I'm getting fired at. 
Maybe it's problems in life that are coming at you like arrows. Maybe it's worries. I don't know if you've ever woken up in the middle of the night and you didn't even know you were worried and you woke up worried. God, you're my shield. Would you protect me from worry? Would you protect me from the words of these other people? Would you protect me from the attacks that come from outside? Oh, oh, oh. protect me from the attacks that come from inside. Some of you are hard on yourself. He's your shield. His right hand sustains me. Your help has made me great. You know what David knew? He knew that he didn't have his act together. We know later on David became a murderer. And yet, what did David do? He humbled himself. You know the big difference between David and Saul? Saul messed up and became more proud. David messed up and humbled himself. Do you, want to have, do you want to have a good relationship with God? Start out with humility. Thank God for what he's made, for who he is. That's why singing songs is so good. That's why starting your quiet time, even reading a psalm is a great start. Spending some time in the Bible. Number two, take time to wait on him. Listen in his word. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen the Santa Claus Part 2. But there's a scene in it that is hilarious to me. Santa Claus has to get married, so he goes on a date. And he takes this woman out. And this woman is all about herself. To the point that, in the middle of dinner, she stands up and performs in the restaurant and embarrasses Tim Allen to death. And then when he says, well, that was a little embarrassing, she freaks out, yells at him, and walks out. A lot of our prayers sound like this. God help me, 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 God help me. See you later, have a great day. We never take time to get still. Now there's a de big debate about whether people can hear God or not, okay? So I, so I want to settle the debate right here. You can. But you probably won't hear God say build an ark. God typically speaks 99.9% .9 of the time through his word, but 100% of the time, what God says to you will line up with his word. Well, Eric, what do you mean God speaks? When you're spending time in prayer, instead of just praying for somebody, uh, like I have a list, and let's say I'm praying for my wife, and I have my wife's name. Now, I can just say, God bless my wife. God help my wife. God help, by the way, if you look in your prayer journal, you'll see the word help a lot. Hello. That's okay. But just get still for just a moment and say, God, how can I pray for them today? And allow the Holy Spirit to give you impressions of what you can pray for somebody. And can I tell you a secret about this? Sometimes when you're praying, you need to get off your list. Don't ever worship the list. It's not about the list. That's just to help you to stay on track. But sometimes when you're praying, maybe all of a sudden somebody comes to mind. And you say... God, I'm going to pray for them today. And then you think, maybe I should call them or text them. I cannot tell you the number of times. I don't, it's got to be in the hundreds at this point. I'm getting old. That I have texted somebody and said, just wanted you to know I prayed for you this morning. And gotten back a, that's an amazing. I know there's no way you knew I had this meeting today. Nope. Now, do I take credit for that? No, you know me. I'm not that smart. I don't even know when you're in the hospital. I know some of you think I just automatically know, but I don't know. Psalms 27, 14 says this, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Can I tell you the hardest thing for an ADD person to do? Wait for anything. Somebody was in front of me this morning on the way here that goes to our church. They went so slow through the light over here that I caught the light. It was yellow. It was green. They started going. It turned yellow. They barely made it over the line. I had to stop for the light. God bless them. Right? Right? Are you that way? We're not patient. When's the last time you said, God, show me someone to pray for. Tell me how to pray for them. 
And then sometimes it's important to share that with somebody. Hey, I just want you to know I was praying for you. Praying that God would bless you. Hebrews 4.12 says it this way, the word of God is alive and active. That word active is where we get the word for energy. Sharper than any double-edged sword. Penetrates even dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Now, next week we're going to talk about confession. But here's what happens when you spend time in God's word and you make that part of your prayer time is God will convict you. When you stop to listen, sometimes you'll realize you have a bad attitude about something. You'll realize that you are arrogant in an area. You'll realize that you have pride in an area. You think you're better than somebody else. Or you messed up. And you just confess it and you move forward. Why? Because God says His Word. That's where we get the word logos. His Word is sharper. Now, there's two words in the Bible for word. The first one is logos, and the next one is rhema. Rhema is when the Word becomes alive. You ready? To you. Watchman Nee said one of the best things in life is when logos becomes rhema. What does that mean? That's, 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 that sounds really complicated. It's when we're sitting in church, for example, and we're talking about God's word, and we read a verse, and all of a sudden you know, that one was for me. That's where logos becomes rhema. And then it's we're responsible for what we do with that. Why? Because now the Holy Spirit has spoken to us. Now, here's some names of God you can use in prayer. Now, it doesn't make you more spiritual. We're just going to pop those up real quick, Randy. I'm not going to read them all. This is just part of a list. It's part of who God is. So, so you can adore God for what? For being the master, for being Jehovah, for being your banner, for being my shepherd, for being the Lord that heals. God has all kinds of names, and part of adoring Him is just knowing that about Him. When's the last time you really took time out to just say, God, I look around and see how awesome you are. That's what we're going to talk about next. Number three, remember his power and presence. Have you ever sat for a sunrise and a sunset on the beach? Or been in the mountains and seen either of those, a sunrise or a sunset. I talked to somebody who went to Hawaii and went to the top of this mountain where you could watch the sunrise and it's supposed to be amazing, but you got to get up at three in the morning and so I'll never see that. <laughs> but have you ever sat and, and suddenly you were overwhelmed with awe? Listen, I want you to take a moment right where you're at. Just close your eyes right where you're at. If you're home, close your eyes right where you're at. Unless you're driving, don't close your eyes if you're driving. So here's the deal. I want you to think of one of your favorite scenes. Maybe it's being out on a boat. Maybe it's being on the beach. Maybe it's sitting in the mountains. And I just want you to thank God for creating that, for his awesome power that created that. Just take a moment to do that right now. Okay, you can open your eyes now. The God who created all of that loves you. See, when you take time to realize how awesome the world is and how awesome what God has created is, you realize that same God. Hey, you ever look at your hand? Okay, when you weren't high. Did you ever look at your hand? I've never been high, but I heard that people are high go, look at my hand. Dude, look at my hand. Do you see my hand? I got a hand. Now, let me tell you something I know about hands, because I'm not smart, so I hardly ever wear gloves, which is bad, especially when you use spray foam. Anybody ever use spray foam? Can I tell you that I've used spray foam and got my fingers stuck together, used spray foam and had it on my fingers for weeks, but if you look at my hands now, guess what? None of that is there. I have ruined clothes. I have ruined gloves. I've ruined hats. I've ruined brand new suits. Oh, I'm amazing. But God made my hand so neat that all of that stuff starts over. Isn't that remarkable? The God who made my fingerprints loves me. When's the last time you considered his majesty, how awesome he is? You can do this while you're driving. Just look around and go, wow. You might have a backyard that's two by two. And you can still see how awesome God is in his creation. And that God loves you you. This is Miriam and Moses' song. They wrote a song together, a brother and sister song after Pharaoh was defeated. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is, 
is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders. You stretch out your right hand. The earth swallows your enemies. In your unfailing love, you'll lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. Do you know what it's like to be adored? I have a friend named Lisa who is a producer for CBS Morning News. She's the one that when Tom Hanks comes to visit, she says, Come on, Tom, come sit over here. You want some coffee? And then, oh, it's time for you to get up. The day before, I got to go and sit in that green room. John Grisham had been there. I don't know if you like John Grisham, but I like John Grisham. I like his books. And so he had been there the day before. I'm like, where did he sit? I wanna... The whole crew came over and talked to us. It was neat. But let me tell you what was cool to me as a dad. My friend Lisa met my daughter Jenna, and she adored her. And I could tell. Because she just looked at her and said, you came from Taiwan at 10 years old, and you've done all this? And what do you want to do? And she just sat and talked to her and listened to her and focused on her and tuned in and adored her. Hey. Not only do you need to take time to adore God, you need to recognize He adores you. He absolutely loves you and cares about you. He sent Jesus to die for you. That's what John 3.16 says. How much greater love than that. This God absolutely loves you. Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. No matter what you walk through, no matter what you deal with, you can stop right where you're at. Think of the universe that God has created and realize that very God loves you. That's adoration. If you will start your prayer time with that, you'll find that your prayer time puts you in his presence and awareness of his presence. You're in his presence. You just forget. But you got to get still. You got to get quiet. You have to listen. Let him speak to your heart. Let him remind you of what's right and remind you of what's wrong through his word. Sharper than any two-edged sword, God, speak to me through your word. And he will change you. Next week, we'll talk about confession a little bit. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, this awesome God loves you. If you want a relationship with him, the Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him, that means whoever surrenders their life to him will not perish but have eternal life. If you want that eternal life today, if you're here this morning, I'd love to talk to you after the service. Maybe you're watching online and the truth is you know about God but you've never surrendered your life to him. You're one step away from coming home. And when you say, Jesus, I believe you died and rose again, paid for my sins, I surrender my life to you. I want to follow you the rest of my life. You take that step towards him, the Bible says he runs to meet you. If you want to do that today, you can do that. If you're here today and as a Christian, prayer has become a back burner thing for you, I want to encourage you, begin to use this, not just in the morning, not just a, but all through the day, take time to adore God, to thank him for who he is. Be aware of his presence. It will change your life. Let's pray. Father, thank you for prayer. Thank you that we can come to you not because of our righteousness, not because of what we've done, but because of what you've done for us. Thank you that you said we can come boldly before you, not because of us, but because of what Jesus did for us. Father, we thank you that we can come into your presence. We thank you as we sing songs of praise. It pulls us into your presence. It reminds us that you're with us. Lord, may we live our lives in awareness of your presence with us and in us. Father, thank you for these moments. I pray for that one that's hurting today, that that pain would be overwhelmed by your presence, by them knowing that you're going to walk with them, that your presence will never leave them. For that one today who doesn't know you that yet, that today as they cry out to you, that, Father, you would wrap your arms around them. We thank you for these moments together. In Jesus' name, amen.